celebrations. You know, if you guys have seen any, like the wrestling match where a guy got put through a table and then uh, there was a buffalo that got put through a table. Uh, there's a hot dog eating contest, all that stuff. My brother, Colton Corn, wears a lot of different hats, but anytime somebody gets put through a table and, a, and another mascot, it's always him. So a uh, special shout out to Colton for uh, fulfilling that role for us. But um, I appreciate you guys' time um, hanging out and uh, hopefully uh, this, this can create some value for you and for your program, but especially um, appreciate the coaches that came and watched a little bit of practice yesterday um, and glad the rain held off. We got to go through uh, the rest of our scrimmage yesterday, but uh, very, very thankful for uh, the coaches that came yesterday, made sure that there were no donuts left over in the West Zone because one of the uh, things that I've learned and I've got a daughter that just turned one in December. I've got another one on the way in the June. The dad bod thing happens really, really quickly. So I know from a uh, personal standpoint, I went and checked to see if there's any leftover donuts. There, there weren't, so good job on that right there. Okay, so um, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to talk through is just uh, kind of real quickly who we are, what we're trying to emphasize, and then just take you through some of the schemes that we run a lot of, and, um, and hopefully it's, there's some wrinkles and, and some value we can create for, for your program. So who we are, what, we're want to, what we want to be, what our philosophy is. We're a spread option offense. So we're an option-based offense. A majority of our run, run schemes are going to be option-based. Um, and we're going to operate predominantly out of uh, 20 and 21 personnel grouping sets. Um, we're going to mix in a little bit of 12, a little bit of 11. We'll probably be a little bit more 11 this year. But we're a, we're a two-back offense uh, from the gum trying to spread the field. So our offensive nickname is Teal Team 6. That's what we're trying to emphasize with our guys. That's our unit nickname. Um, because every time we try to take the field, we're, we're not trying to settle for field goals in the red zone, killer instinct, finish drives. If you came to the scrimmage yesterday, you probably think we're a teal team three because we kicked a lot of field goals yesterday, but we're trying to have the mentality of finishing drive and scoring points. So we don't give our guys a bunch of different goals. What's your third down percentage you're trying to have? What completion percentage you're trying to have? What are you trying to average per carry? We just give them three things. These are the three things we try to emphasize. We try to have the mentality of less is more when you're trying to emphasize things with your guys. So the three things that we emphasize with our, with our guys, their, their, their purpose, their it, their job, secure, punish, score. And so before every team meeting, before every offensive unit meeting, we'll ask our offense, Teal Team 6, what's your it? And they're going to repeat to us, secure, punish, score. Those are the three things we're trying to emphasize. If we secure the football, if we don't turn it over, we give ourselves a chance. If we play a physical brand of football, you know, we always challenge our guys. When, when teams watch us, when, play, when other coaches, other players watch us, we want them to say that no one plays harder than you guys. Nobody plays harder than you, and you're trying to emphasize that in meetings, and obviously we're trying to finish drives and score points. I'm not going to get into the 12% the rule. That's more of a, just a program thing. But those are the three things. It's real simple. That's what we're going to emphasize with our guys uh, from a unit standpoint, and those are things that they're gonna, they're, we're going to talk about and they're going to hear us talk about over and over and over. So while we do what we do, we want to force the defense to defend the dive quarterback pitch. They have to be sound versus our option principles. Okay, we want to be in spread sets to be able to stretch the defense, make them uh, defend the entire field. Okay, where we've gotten a lot better over the last few years offensively is um, obviously there's been a couple key players that have really, really made a big impact on us offensively. Everybody who's watched us know how good the quarterback is. Grayson McCall, a very talented player. But what we've done a really good job of is trying to blend in more RPOs that from our two bag, 21 personnel sets. So we want to be able to put different defenders in conflict. And I want to take you through a couple of those that we really like. And then on top of those RPOs, layering in your play actions that all look the same. They all look like your core run concepts. They all look like your core RPOs that you're carrying that week. And then the play actions are tied into it. And then trying to show different formations, shifts, motions, but you're running those same core plays. Whatever our top three, four, five run schemes that week, trying to make everything to look the same from a pre-snap and post-snap standpoint. Okay, so this, this is what I want to take you guys through. So these are the four concepts that I want to be able to show you guys some tape of, why we run it, why we like it, and potentially some of the issues you might have if you, if you do a little bit of this. So I'm going to take you through our, our freeze option series first. Next, we'll do some spur RPOs. So your, your uh, spur nickel RPOs to the field and just different route tags we have on it. And then I'll take you through some of our boundary free safety RPOs. If that free safety is getting aggressive, fit in the run. And then our play action shots that are all kind of tied into that to look the same to be able to take advantage of different looks that you're getting from the defense. So I'll take you through our two back freeze option first. All right, and then at the end, I'll show you some different variations where we do it from one back. Uh, because not everybody in here obviously uh, is potentially a, a two-back offense. You might be a one-back offense, but you can do it um, from one-back sets. So essentially, when we're, we, we've got most of these clips are running to the field, but we run it to the field or to the boundary. It is glorified speed option. 
We're pitching off the end man on the line of scrimmage, and we're trying to get three hats on the perimeter defenders to the field. And I'll talk you through those angles here in a second. And so um, what we're doing in the from the quarterback standpoint and running back standpoint is a quarterback's going to open up opposite. He's going to open up towards the left, and then we're running this variation of speed option to the field. So uh, when we started running a lot of uh, – we started running more freeze option in 2020. Before 2020, it was more speed option, where the quarterback was going to catch the snap, he was going to attack the defensive end, try to get the ball pitched. The problem with that play at times can be how can you get to that second level with your offensive tackle. It's really difficult. When he sees two back flow, that backer should be running. It's difficult for that tackle to get up to the backer. So what we want to do is try to give our offensive line a better opportunity of trying to get to that second level. Just with backfield action, false key those backers so your tackles, your offensive line can get up to that second level. So our quarterback's going to open up opposite. That running back in the pistol is going to step downhill like it's some type of inside run. Uh, I'd say probably 80% of our offense, 75, 80% of our offense is some type of midline aiming point with that running back coming downhill. So we want all those things to look the same. The lead running back is going to counter step to be a perimeter blocker to the field. But all we're trying to do is try to make the, that second level, those linebackers hesitate, make them work the opposite way so our play side tackle can get up to that backer and we get that second level secured. Before, if we try to run any type of speed option off of a two back set, they both go right now, quarterback catches and tries to attack the defensive end and you're not able to get to that backer right there. He scrapes outside the box and now your running back has to take him and you're short a, a blocker out there to the field. So that's the purpose of why we started running more of this to allow our offensive line to capture the second level and get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Okay, so from the wide here, I'll show you how we kind of uh, work everything out from a perimeter blocking standpoint. So to the field, the slot receiver, and you can personnel this out. Obviously, you want to personnel this out where that's one of your better blockers. Uh, if you've got a bigger body receiver right there, this is the key block trying to make that block on the spur over uh, linebacker right there. So number two is pushing, and he's going to pin the spur right there, blocking for outside leverage. We're trying to get the ball pitched outside. The receiver outside is pushing and cracking to the safety, the field safety. Still, again, trying to block for outside leverage. And then the lead running back is going to try and false key to get those linebackers to step the wrong way. And then he's leading out for the corner. So from a perimeter standpoint, we like these angles as far as getting everybody pinned. You want this ball, this ball to hit outside the block of the spur and outside the block of that strong safety. And hopefully that block on the corner ends up being a kickout block and you're getting the ball pitched to the field with some space. Okay, it's a simple play for the quarterback. He doesn't have to be a primary runner. He just has to have enough of a burst to be able to get on, on that defensive end's toes. So there's the block on the spur, keeping him pinned right there. The outside receiver has his eyes on that field safety. He's going to push that corner off. And then once that safety gets his feet in the ground, now he can come and crack that safety. And then the running back's going to lead out in the corner. So you're trying to create that running lane right there between the spur and the strong safety with the kick out block by the corner. Okay, and then it doesn't have to necessarily be a two back set. This could be something where if you've got a slot receiver and you want to bring that guy in motion, now he can become the pitch guy. But obviously, you want to pitch it to the whoever it is, your playmaker, you're trying to get into his hands, your faster guy that can outrun some of those angles from the pursuit inside. Okay, we like this a lot. You know, there's ways in our offense where it doesn't have to always be a, a freeze option play where the running back has to be a lead blocker. We can run some different uh, variations of midline where the quarterback can read the defensive tackle, pitch off the defensive end, and there's some type of inside run uh, uh, element to it. The problem being you're short one perimeter defender. And so if teams are going to play cover two to the field tee and try to get the corner aggressive fitting in for the run, if we didn't have an extra lead blocker out there with the running back coming, sometimes that's a difficult block for that outside receiver to maintain, especially if they're really going to play more of like a three cloud type look and that corner's really shooting that block, it'd be difficult. Now this guy doesn't have to maintain this block. He can just take that outside release, hold that corner, and then push crack to that safety. And again, you're still trying to create that same running lane. If we get a decent block on the spur and get him pinned, where you pin the spur, running back leads out on the corner, and then you've got a hat on the safety with that um, outside receiver.
Okay, so if you run this a lot, eventually that, those linebackers are going to be taught. They're going to try and get a, a little bit of a pickup on if they see that counteraction right there where they're going to try and scrape that backer outside of the box. So this is a tough look for that tackle, obviously. He's getting squeezed off. He's not able to get to that backer. But even if that backer scrapes, if he doesn't, if he scrapes tight enough, that quarterback can still get on his toes enough to where you can get it out flanked and still get that ball pitched. Okay, but the key block to the play is being able to block that spur. So you really want to try to person out with a, you've got a bigger body receiver, your best blocker, somebody that can maintain that block. You could, if you don't feel good about maintaining that block with your number two receiver, you could lead with the running back on that spur. The only problem is it's probably going to get cut back into that second level and you're trying to get everything outran and try to get it out, hash number sidelines right there. But it's a simple play for the quarterback. It gets it to your, your, your playmakers outside in space, and it, hopefully it's taking hits off the quarterback. All right, so I'll just show this from the uh, end zone angle first. But the, our lead back doesn't have to always necessarily be towards the play call. So we can tag it where the, the pitch back is going to be lined up to the boundary, and now the pistol back is the one that's going to be uh, uh, being the lead blocker out on the corner. Okay, the tackle is going to take the best release to get to that backer. So if he's got a head up four, if he's got a four eye, he can jab and loop around us outside of that defensive end to make sure he secures the backer. But the whole reason you're doing the play is trying to false key those backers, which we, you get that with the mic right there. He steps inside with that quarterback open and opposite. He sees a slight downhill action with that pistol back, and that false keys him enough to where that tackle can get up to him, and you've got the second level captured right there. Again, quarterback's not getting hit. It's getting out of his hands. It's something simple to get it on the perimeter and get it to your playmakers. You can see the wide right here again. It's the same blocking scheme outside with that spur apexed in between the number two receiver. Okay, this is a block that you got to practice a lot, obviously, for that guy to be able to maintain and have good leverage and have good timing. But if you get him pinned to get outside, you push crack to the safety, you still, again, you're creating that running lane outside for that running back to continue to stretch, from the, stretch away from the pursuit. Sir. Hey, if the spur pre-snap were to tighten down really hard, mm -hmm. do y'all adjust anything to that? Or do y'all just, does he just have to get flat and make the block? Or? So the quarterback handles the edge pressure check for us. Okay. So if they had some type of Sam Go, cover three look coming, uh, or if that spur is tight to the line of scrimmage in a position where your number two receiver can't make that block, okay. now it's on the quarterback's, it's the quarterback's job to handle the edge pressure check. And that edge pressure check changes week to week. Some, some weeks we might want to check to a quick game concept. Some weeks we might check into more of a true zone option. You make him the pitch key if he's going to come off the edge. So it's kind of game plan specific in terms of what we want to go to. Um, but that's part of the play call. So we would make the play call, and then whatever the edge pressure check is, it would be or, and we would tell him week to week. Game plan specific, what we'd want to go to. Good question. Okay, so now we're going to the boundary with all this. It's the same, same scheme, same concept. Now we're attacking the boundary with it. Okay, the rules stay the same though. Now we just don't have to make that block on that overhang defender because we don't have one into the boundary. The rules are still going to stay the same for the receiver and for that lead running back. So there's still going to there's going to be different formations. There's going to be different pictures, but the 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 run scheme stays the same and the rules stay the same from a perimeter standpoint. So now we're going to run it to the boundary. The X receiver, the boundary receiver, the outside guy is still thinking he's push cracking to that safety. So he's responsible for this free safety. So he's got to make sure that his eyes are on that free. And if we get motion like that. Okay, he's thinking he's pushing the corner off, but if that free safety comes down low, my eye's got to be on that free. I can't really push this corner off. He can only go vertical for one step, and he's got to come inside right now to make sure he gets a piece of that free safety. Okay, running back is still leading out on the corner. You just don't have a number two receiver. You don't have an overhang that you have to worry about into the boundary. So we're always going to be four by one, four yards away from the quarterback, one yard depth. And we'll grade our pitches, too, on this during fall camp, during spring practice. Let me let it run for a second. We probably grade that a B. Like we, we want all of our pitches to be as many A pitches as possible because obviously you don't have to maintain these blocks as long as, as you need to. So if that running back is catching that pitch even with the quarterback and he's going downhill, we would label that as an A pitch. We keep stats on it during the spring and during fall camp. He's slightly behind him. I mean, it's decent, 
but he's a little bit behind him right there. We want him to be catching it downhill. So these blocks aren't having to be maintained, and you can hit it right on time right there. But four by one on any of our pitch plays. Anytime there's a pitch player involved, he's always trying to maintain that four by one relationship. Okay, so there it is to the boundary. Here it is again to the boundary off of an um, unbalanced picture. Okay, so now if we get, in, get him into an unbalanced check that we're trying to attack, now I don't have to worry about push cracking to the safety. We don't have an, a, a receiver up here. We've got a tight end over, two receivers to the field, two running backs in the backfield. Now this lead back is taking that corner, whoever the, the secondary defender is, that's who's going to end up taking, trying to kick out. Okay, and the tackle's got to understand right here where this play's trying to hit. We false key the wheel linebacker enough right there, even though he's still recognizing trying to get out of the box, the tackle's got to take that path to make sure he keeps him pinned inside. Don't let him scrape over, scrape over the top. We get lucky right there on the wheel. He ends up reading it pretty decent. Okay, but you can do this from an unbalanced set. If you, if you run it from a two running back alignment, you still have that lead blocker into the boundary. Okay, so here it is again into the boundary. X receiver still push cracking to the free safety. Running back is leading out for the corner. Okay, tackle should have a pretty easy shot of trying to get to that will linebacker based off his alignment right here. Okay, but again, you got to have some counters off of this from a play action standpoint and potentially some inside runs because eventually if you start doing this a little bit, those backers are going to start running. So quarterback does a great job right here of seeing that picture right there. Will linebacker scrapes way over top of the box and it ends up being a quarterback run. He cuts it back inside. So it doesn't have to automatically be a pitch if you're getting a look where we don't have good leverage. Those backers are really turning around and could end up being a quarterback run right there if you get that heavy squeeze scrape. So those are just some variations off of two back. Now I want to just show you some, some variations of it off of one back. We major in it off of two back just because that's who we are. But I wanted to tag some of these because probably th maybe this fits your, your system, your personnel a little bit better. Okay, so one way we try to get to it off of one back is basically getting to essentially the same, same play, but use an escort or jet motion right here by a slot receiver or a tight end to become that lead back. So the rules are still staying the same to the field, even though we're in one back right here. He's pushing to the spur. He's going to crack the safety. Now the quarterback's going to snap it before he crosses the center, and he's, becoming, he's taking the place of that second running back leading on the corner. Okay, and on this one right here, we can, it's game plan week to week based off of what our favorite formations, what our favorite play actions are. But here the quarterback's going to open up towards it. So I believe in this game plan we had where we had the little tight end flat, uh, split zone RPO. So we just wanted to pair up the freeze option off that same motion, same formation, all that stuff right there. Okay, we don't get a great block on the safety right here. If we get a better piece of them right here, that ball's going to hit like that first one did earlier in the, in the, in the tape where he should be kicking out that corner, and hopefully that running back hits it outside of that block on the safety to the field. Okay, no difference, same rules for the O-line, no change in, in their rules. Okay, you don't have to counter it every time, you don't have to open up opposite. If you feel more comfortable with that quarterback, open up towards it. So he sees that defensive end, you can do that too, you're still getting the same thing. If we can just get him to pause for a count, if we can get him to freeze just for a second, we feel like our tackle should be able to get up to that second level and get that ball outside. Okay, so some other ways you could potentially go uh, attack a three down structure with still getting that lead blocker to the field. So again, um, if you don't feel great about this matchup right here with your slot receiver blocking that spur, or if he's tight the line of scrimmage, anything like that, we have some tags where if you feel good about your tackles arcing out, we do a decent amount where we put our tackles out on the perimeter he can take the place of the back and be a lead blocker outside. We just don't run this versus four down fronts because your guard can't get up to the backer. If we're going to put the tackle out on the spur, now the guard's got to be responsible for getting to the, the play side backer. So if we had a, a two eye, head up two, shade, anything like that, you're probably not going to get there. That backer will scrape out of the box. So we don't like it versus four down fronts. But three down, we feel like with the play action or the freeze action in the backfield, it should get that mic to hang enough where the guard can capture him and now that tackle's just trying to, trying to get leverage for that on that spur to where the ball gets outside. But if he runs like this, now the tackle can just react, kick him out, and the ball end up hitting underneath of him.
Same call, three down. We're putting the tackle on the spur, and we're just two for two outside. If they recognize man, they can run them off. Okay, we get a little leakage backside, but the quarterback eats up enough of the space right there to be, get the ball out of his hands and get it pitched on the defensive end. So that one ends up hitting outside as opposed to the first one that Spur tried to play outside the tackle and the running back hit underneath that block. Okay, so here's one back um, freeze option into the boundary. So if we run it to a tight end surface, we'd have a different tag for this. Now we're probably not going to push crack this with the X receiver. All the other uh, two back ones I showed you were push crack into the, the free safety with the X, and then that lead back was coming for the corner. So when we do it to a tight end service, we have a different tag for it, which tells the X receiver, you just lock on the corner, and now the tight end is the one that's going to be on that free safety low. Okay, if you felt like the X has enough time based off of your opponent, if the X can still uh, push crack to the free safety, those are probably the best angles, but it kind of depends on what formation you're running it out of. Still trying to get a pitch off that end man line of scrimmage. As soon as he has that guy out flank, want the quarterback to get it out of his hands so he's not taking extra hits, extra uh, blows to his body. Same call to a tight end surface here in the boundary. So the X is just locked on the corner, and the tight end is going to work up to the free safety. Okay, you can teach your tight end to peek inside just to make sure you got that second level secured first before you work up to the safety. Now this one right here, and man on line of scrimmage tries to slow play him and shuffle outside, so the quarterback ends up taking off with it. Okay, we like using this too to try and get into some different personnel groupings. Uh, again, you can do it off unbalanced, but trying to shorten how many blocks you got to execute to the boundary. So we're in an unbalanced set right here. We're in 11 personnel, so we got three receivers to the field. The tight end's flexed off the line of scrimmage, but the core play is staying the same right here. We just don't have an extra lead blocker for the running back. But you're seeing what we're trying to achieve out of the second level. We just want those guys to freeze enough where our O-line can climb up to them and we can pick, get it pitched off that end man on line of scrimmage. Coach, are you teaching your quarterback to run inside the two man or do you run an at him? Or what's his fast quarterback? Anytime we pitch off of a uh, spur overhang, I tell him to attack the inside shoulder pad to make that guy make a decision. If we're pitching off an end man on the line of scrimmage, I have that path a little bit wider, more towards the outside shoulder pad, because we're trying to get that ball pitched and get, out, get it out of his hand. And again, just trying to emphasize, as soon as you got them out flank, get it out of your hand, and uh, don't take any un extra unnecessary shots. Same play, play concept, just into an unbalanced set. You've still got one extra uh, blocker right here to, to take the corner of the free safety, whoever's hanging backside on an unbalanced picture. And then you just got to make the decision you want the quarterback to open up to it or opposite based off of what other calls you got off that formation. But we're getting that backer to freeze enough where the tackle can get to him. Quarterback can get it pitched off that end man on line of scrimmage. Okay, so, so those are some of the freeze option concepts right there, two back or one back. I think you've got to be able to protect the play by making sure your play actions marry up with what your favorite run schemes are, if you're going to run some of that. So obviously, based off of the quarterback's footwork, if you're going to open up opposite and then push off the mesh and set up, there's only certain route concepts you can run just from a timing standpoint. So this is, this is one that we like to carry off of that. This is a landmark post by number one that can be a tight end, it can be a single receiver, whatever you want. But on some of those clips, you probably saw us running the, the freeze option to the field and the free safety is the one running the alley and ends up making the play. Well, obviously we don't really have a hat on that guy on this play. So for us in the box, if we notice that free safety is really aggressive running the alley on any of this type of freeze option um, action in the backfield, our first answer would be come back and try and take that shot post backside. Now, if I don't have it, if the safety doesn't run the alley, if he backpedals, now we'll transition out to the sail concept to the field. And just a mandatory outside release go by one, a seam release sail by two, and then the check down for the quarterback would be that swing. And so from an eye standpoint, it's a pretty easy transition for him, um, and they feel comfortable with it. So both of these, we didn't get the post thrown on it. Uh, earlier clip in this game, that free safety was really running the alley. 
um, and end up making a tackle. So that's what our answer was to come back to this. We thought he was going to be aggressive to run the alley on this. Kind of hangs backside. We don't get the movement out of him that we want. So a quarterback doesn't take it. You could potentially make a case you could throw it over top, but he didn't like it. So he's going to transition outside to the field to that sail route to the swing, just trying to high load that, that uh, flat defender to the field. So this one's off of that counter freeze option. So I want the footwork in the backfield to be the same for the quarterback. So he's going to open up opposite. I want him to push for two steps off the mesh to allow that second level. And hopefully you're hoping that third level pushes as well, thinking that the freeze option play is coming. And you open up that window right there. Now he didn't take the cheese, but there's something where the quarterback can transition to and still make that sell route throw to the field and not be late. Okay, routes are the same. I'll just show it from the end zone. Okay, so it could make the case right here. I could take the shot. He didn't feel good about it. Felt like that safety was kind of hanging in the middle of the field. So he transitions off of a good escape in the pocket, and we get out to the sell route late. Okay, with that blitz, obviously we would have liked to have uh, made a protection check to get that spur picked up. We lost our swing route right there, so if that flat defender got underneath the sail route, we wouldn't have anything to transition to. Okay, so that's the freeze option stuff and then the complement play action that goes along with it. So the, the next step is, is our spur RPOs, the spur nickel player that we're trying to put into conflict. And I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail from a run scheme standpoint as far as what we're running because we could, it kind of changes week to week. It depends on what our favorite core runs are for that week. I'm going to talk more so about the route tags that we change up based off of the looks. So what you're going to see predominantly right here is split zone, same side zone, and ISO. And that just depends on what kind of structure we're playing, where our matchups are, what fits us better that week. That kind of changes week to week. So the run schemes are, run schemes are going to change as you're watching through it. But the way I've got it organized is I've got all, all of these concepts at first. So this is our hitch concept out there to the field. So the quarterback's responsible for reading that spur. From a route standpoint outside, that's a, those are six-yard hitches. They're thinking those are hitch routes if I'm uncovered, and then you've got conversion rules built into it. So like any hitch route, you've got your fade conversion if you get a hard corner, if he's pressed outside. Okay, our conversion inside is if we get any defender, if he's covered, if that rover, that strong safety rolls down over top of him, if he's covered, don't stay covered, turn that into a slant. So you've got a, a slant route built in as a conversion with number two and a hitch route conversion outside by number one. Okay, so if that spur is covering up the hitch route, if he's not folding in, we'd like to think we've got decent enough numbers and we've got decent enough moving inside where we can hand that football off and get positive yardage. yardage. The X receiver's got to get in, there, get in there to dig out the free safety. He's got to be the one that takes that free safety. Okay, once the spur starts being more aggressive to fit into the box, if they're giving me this hitch route, now I can transition out to number two. If it's edge pressure on any of our spur RPOs, if he's blitzing, now the quarterback's got to read his angle. So if that spur is blitzing at the quarterback, we got to hand that football off because that could be a collision. They could tip the ball, anything like that. We give them a rule on this, too. If, they're, if, if you're playing against a team that's playing middle close, you know it's middle close, and he's got an easy throw outside to the uh, number one hitch, he can go ahead and take that, even though the spur is kind of split, playing in between. Obviously, that's more so guys that have been in the offense for a little while and got a better feel for it and all that. Okay, so this is split zone from a run game standpoint, and it's just our hitch concept out to the field. So if they're going to play that two look to the field, the spur's got his eyes on number two, we should be able to have a, a decent enough run inside if we're doing our jobs and we're, we're able to dig out that free safety with the X. So easy read for the quarterback. They cover up number two. I'm going to hand that football off. The X receiver has to come down and block that, that free safety fitting into the box. Okay, running backs, Reed tells him to cut it backside. And now the corner is the one that's left that has to come off and make a tackle. Okay, so this is same side zone. Spurs apex pre-snap, he's covered up number two, he's not a part of the run fit, we're going to hand that football off. Okay, so now the free safety is really aggressive coming down there, almost ends up making this play, the running back ends up squeaking through. Okay, but if that free safety is aggressively coming downhill, that would be our, our, our answer would be to come to the next um, RPO I'm going to talk you through. If he's not able to make that block, that's the, we have to make an adjustment in terms of who we need to read in terms of the RPO. So he's screaming downhill in there. Now we got to make an adjustment. I'll, I'll get to those in a second. Same thing, same side zone. Spurs not giving me the hitch route. Quarterback's going to throw it off or, or uh, hand it off. And that first clip against App State, 
Okay, the backside linebacker scraped heavy over the top, so the running back hit it backside. Now the wheel linebacker is kind of hanging backside, so now he's going to hit this play front side. Okay, so all simple handoff reads. Everybody agrees right there. They're not giving me an easy throw. I need to hand the football off. Same call, same side zone, same look, handoff read. We can mix up our split at the X receiver to try and get a hat on that free safety, make sure he's not the one making the tackle. Okay, so he does a decent enough job of running interference right there on the free safety where that X um, runs the corner basically out of the play. But if that backside backer scrapes over the top, that's telling the running back he's going to cut it backside and our X receiver has to dig out that free. Okay, so now we'll get into some of the pull reads. So now Spurs going to get aggressive. They've got an uh, edge pressure call from the field. If he's going to uncover number two and give me that throwing window, we can take that hitch route. So he's uncovered, so he's going to sit it down on the six-yard hitch. There's no conversion right there. Outside receiver's busting. Cover two, he should convert that to a fade to try and get that corner from folding back in to make the tackle right there. If the Spurs blitz him from space, quarterback can still make that throw. It's so more so if you think he's a threat to make contact on you or tip the ball, we want to air towards handing that football off right there on the, on the RPO outside. Okay, same thing ends up happening right here. Spurs tight to the box. He's going to fold in. They're going to give me that easy six-yard hitch access throw to number two. So now we can be aggressive to throw that ball out there and take advantage of the space. No conversion because he wasn't covered right there. Okay, this one, the quarterback transitions outside of the number one receiver. So that spur folds in. You know, sometimes on this hitch concept, sometimes when those spurs kind of just concrete and hang in between, or if he folds in slightly, they can cover up number two. So on some of those, you really want to try and force more of a handoff read because it's hard to make that hitch route throw over top of number two. But this is one pre-snap. He felt like that corner is going to be bailing. Or even if he did, if he just read the spur, he felt like he had to throw over top of the spur, he should be transitioning out to number one to the six-yard hitch to the number one receiver outside. Okay, now you're going to just see the conversion. We don't end up throwing the slant route to number two, but just wanted to have a clip on here of why we teach that conversion by number two to a slant route. Okay, got an extra uh, uh, perimeter blitzer right here. This is a spur, strong safety blitz. So you got an extra hat. So he needs to be able to hand the football off. You better get rid of it quick. That safety is unblocked. But I'm just showing you the top of the screen while we teach this as a slant route to occupy that flat defender now, pushing over towards him, and it gives him that easy hitch access window outside of number one. Kind of pulls him out of the window. And if it doesn't pull him out of the window, if he plays heavy outside leverage, we can throw that slant to inside number two. Okay, I already throwed you an out, I showed you an outside hitch throw. Uh, last one right here, now you're going to see the conversion thrown to uh, number two. So the spur stand on the line of scrimmage right here. This is split zone. So the running back should have a hat on that spur to protect the throw for the quarterback. Now he treated this like a covered read with that safety playing outside leverage over top of him. So now he's getting the conversion into the slant inside. Okay, so those are those uh, hitch RPOs. So now the, the switch up that we can have outside from a route concept standpoint is now we can have this speed out by number two with the curl route by number one. So now if they're forcing you to hand the football off the Spurs playing in between, he's forcing handoff reads, and you want the quarterback to be a little bit more aggressive to get the ball thrown, now our changeup is to go to this uh, route concept outside from an RPO standpoint. Okay. Um, same reads as before. If that spur's not folding in, if they're not giving me an easy throw, I've got to hand this football off. Same side zone. Spurs covering up number two. We're going to hand that football off. Easy, simple read for the quarterback. I was contractually obligated by our offensive line coach to make sure there were some run plays on the RPO cut up. You're welcome, Coach Dirt. Uh, same deal right here. What formation we want, what personnel we like, that changes week to week based off of matchups and who we're playing, but simple read for the quarterback. He's covered up number two. I need to hand the football off. Same side zone where the backside backer hangs, so that running back's thinking front side cut. I want to get to some more running low on time, so I want to make sure I get to some of the uh, uh, adjustments later. Okay, so now the Spurs fold in. 
Now we got that speed out outside of number two. Four step rollover, no conversion for him. Post curl stem for the outside number one receiver. Simple read. Okay, easy throw for the quarterback on the rover. Same thing right there. Spurs folding in. Now we can take advantage of that space. I want to make sure you get to the, uh, the clips where the reason we have the curl route on. Okay, this would be more of, a, uh, of the reason why we would switch to this RPO tag instead of the hitch concept. So the spur folds in, okay, but he folds in and they, he's still kind of covering up that hitch window. Now we can get that slot receiver to run away from the throwing window, or away from that spur to open himself outside. Okay, this one, I think on this uh, RPO too, you can tell your quarterback to be a little bit more aggressive to let it rip outside because he's running away from that spur. On the hitch concept, sometimes that spur can just kind of be in that window. So I think this cleans it up a little bit more for the quarterback. They can be a little bit more aggressive to get it thrown outside if they've got the space. Okay, and uh, okay, so now you've got it into a cover three structure. So the reason we like it with the curl instead of just a, a rollover and a go route right outside is if you get cover three, you'd be covered up right here. This guy really should be trying to drive on this rollover, but that curl window is going to end up popping open if he does. So he should be driving right here, and that, that would tell the quarterback to transition to the curl, uh, curl route outside by one. And we got an example of it right here. Okay, so now we get it into cover three. So there's the quarterback's uh, read. Now, could make the case right here, it's tough when it's Sam go inside, as opposed to Sam coming off the edge in terms of reading his angle. But now that flat defender's taking away the rollover, we want our quarterback to transition inside to the curl route if the flat defender takes away that rollover. What's the depth on the curl? He's pushing for 10 yards. He's going to take it to 15, and then we're back to the quarterback. That's what it is on the playbook. You, you know as well as I do, you tell them 15, they end up getting to 12 sometimes. But really drive that corner off. Four steps on the rollover. Okay, and then the last variation, it's the same hitch concept. You can tag whatever route concept you want outside, but now we'll play with which way we have the quarterback opening up. So on all these, it's the same hitch concept, but the quarterback's going to open up away from the spur. So if we notice on tape where the spur is aggressive to fit away from which way the quarterback opens up, whether that's being a pistol team, this would be our answer to come back to. Okay, so now the quarterback's going to open up away from it, but it's that same hitch concept that we showed at first. Spurs just kind of anchored, playing in between both. We're going to hand that football off inside. Same thing, reading the spur to the field. We got ISO tagged inside. Spurs bumping outside. We're going to hand that football off. Same call out of a two by two set. We thought the spur was going to be aggressive to fit if that running or the quarterback opened up into the boundary. He doesn't. He tells the quarterback he's handing the football off. Tag whatever your favorite inside run concept is. It doesn't matter what the run concept is. That, that's more game we, uh, uh, matchup and week to week preparation for us. Well, is that still a read? Uh, he's still reading that spur? Is that pre snap? Post snap. It's all post snap. The timing's a little bit different on this, though. With the quarterback, you couldn't have it on the same timing if the quarterback's open up way. He's got to have a little bit more time to be able to read that spur. So the running back's going to wait until the quarterback opens up and presents the ball to him, and then he's going to go. So it almost is somewhat draw-like in terms of that. Now, some of these are from when we were still offset, but when that running back's in the pistol, he's got to wait until the quarterback opens up, and then he can come downhill to give that quarterback plenty of time to read the spur. Now, probably more of a defensive call rather than fitting off of the back right here, but that's just one way where we'd want to open up away from the spur and be able to take advantage of that space, hitting that, uh, that hitch route to the field. Okay, this is probably a better example of somebody fitting off of the back. Back's weak, quarterback's going to open up away from him, that spur folds in, tight by alignment, and now he's got the opportunity to throw that hitch right out there to the field. Same route conversions, if that rover came down over top of number two, he could turn that into a slant. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump down to uh, some of the boundary free safety RPOs just because I'm running out of time here. but So going back to some of those clips, on some of those handoffs, you saw that free safety really coming downhill, really aggressive, being a, an aggressive run fitter into the box, and it's hard for that X receiver to dig him out. So the adjustment for us would be now we want to uh, be able to make that our RPO read into the boundary. 
Okay, and it doesn't matter if it's 11, 12, 21, 20. You're going to see all those personnel groupings and all those formations in this cut up. But our answer would be if that free safety is coming downhill so aggressively to fit into the box, now we want to make him the RPO read and attack the boundary with our out route. If you like glances better, you can go with glance routes. We just have a little bit more success with out routes if that corner is bailing instead of trying to have to fit that glance route over top of the safety's head. If you make it a glance route, sometimes it's a difficult read for the quarterback, I think, because the free safety can fit in the box a couple steps, then see a pull read, and then he backpedals into that glance window. It makes it a little bit difficult. Okay, but again, the run, run scheme is whatever you want it to be. It can be ISO, it can be split zone, it can be same side, whatever you want it to be, but we're, this is just our adjustment if that free safety is aggressively fitting into the box. Okay, so playing a cover two shell, not aggressively fitting in the box, that's a handoff free for the quarterback. Same thing, free safety is not aggressively fitting into the box, they're going two over one, we feel like we should be able to have a positive yards play right there on the handoff inside with whatever run scheme we got tagged. Okay, but now if they are going to play that free safety close to the line of scrimmage or on the snap, really fit him aggressively into the box, now we want to take advantage of that one-on-one -on -one matchup outside with the X. And so that out route outside for us is a six-step speed out. If that corner is bailing, if he's giving ground, we're going to try and throw that speed out with that quarterback RPO time, and he's flipping his hips. It's a play fake. He's flipping his hips, and he's driving that ball outside. Same uh, uh, conversion rules on any of your out cuts. If it's press, if it's cover two, he's going to convert it to a fade outside. Okay, so there's one where the free safety is low, corner bails. Same thing right here. Free safety is aggressively fitting into the box, potentially a free safety blitz call right here. He's really coming, he's triggering. That quarterback's got that space outside to beat him with the ball and take advantage of that one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so there's where we threw the out cut. You can, you can change up the split of the X you know, sometimes we'll get into a tight split to try and put that X receiver in a position to be able to dig out that free safety on some of your direct runs or if you're, you're, you've got your RPO set to the field. But also like to pair it up with that boundary free safety RPO from a tight split just to get them into more of a zone call where that X can stem at that corner, get into his blind spot, and then take advantage of that grass right there on the out route by the uh, end of the boundary. Okay, so we like mixing up the splits on that. Yeah. So the run scheme is all the same. It's just the RPO tag at the end of it that tells them that. That tells them which guy to read. Yep. So, uh, people, you want to run this, white, write this down. Blue means we're reading your, your spur. Red means we're reading your free safety. <laughs> the signal looks like that. Uh, but uh, but the, tag tell, the, the tag tells the quarterback who he's responsible for reading. Okay. So, um, we like it a lot out of 20. Those are all 11 personnel grouping sets. We like it a lot out of 21 and 12 because now you've got an extra hat on that spur, and the quarterback doesn't have to have some type of edge pressure plan if they're bringing that spur off the edge from the field. Okay, but those are all uh, out route uh, with no conversions. Uh, that's another out cut. Just want to make sure you guys see some of the adjustments. Okay, so again, you get a one-on-one -on -one right here. Free safety fits into the box. So now you got press on the X. And now you get that fade conversion outside, one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, and if you don't have a clean look on it, the quarterback would hand it off right there if they play two over one. Now, if they go cover two, I'm going to skip ahead. You've seen the out cut. Okay, if they give you more of a two shell, the quarterback's got a decision on this. If that free safety is not pushing off the hash in a two shell and that corner's shoulders are locked, as soon as he sees cover two, he can flash his eyes out to that corner. If he sees that corner's shoulders locked, now it can become a whole shot right there into the boundary. That's why we like the out route uh, as the tag better on the RPO rather than the glance, because if you go glance right there, you're going to hand it off every time. But now you've got an opportunity to beat that cover two shell uh, with the quarterback driving it into the window. And that's why typically, uh, we don't have to, but a lot of these, we open up the quarterback into the boundary. And that, again, that pairs up with your, uh, your spur RPO where we open up opposite. It also pairs up with that freeze option stuff that I showed you at the beginning that would look the same, and then you can run that freeze option in the boundary. So there's our cover two hole shot. Same thing happens right here. 
It's just from that same tight split. So earlier in that game, it was a tight split. They played a cover four structure, and you got the out route converted, or he kept the out route on. Now he's going to convert it versus that hard cover two corner. Free safety is not really pushing off the hash, and that corner shoulders are square. So he's going to drive it right into that window to the X. For the quarterback, all, all post snap. He'll have an idea, maybe um, if, if cover two's coming because of the different depths of the corner and the free safety, he's thinking, okay, maybe a potential for a whole shot if it's a cover two conversion, but it's all, all post snap. Okay, and then another, another cover two deal right here. From alignment standpoint, that free safety is pushing outside, outside the tackle pre snap, that corner's low, that's kind of alert for him. Hey, I got a potential shot at, at, at hitting that whole window right there in between the corner and the free on that pre-snap alignment. So um, that's all the time I've got right there. I don't want to go over and, and keep people from getting lunch. Is there any other, um, any other questions or anything off the, off the top that I can help answer? Okay, thank you for your time.